Good evening, everyone. Could you just please just check your cell phone and make sure that they are on silence? Thank you. And we're ready to get the program started. So if you'd rise, please, for the procession, we'd appreciate it.
please remain standing for our national anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's my pleasure this evening to introduce, oh, please be seated. <laughs> It's my pleasure this evening uh, to introduce our first speaker, Bethany Elmore. Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome family, friends, faculty, and administration, and my fellow classmates to the graduation ceremony of Cocalica's class of 2022. Congratulations. I stand here today likely feeling the same things you may be feeling, a sense of pride and accomplishment, sentiments of closure, a hopeful outlook for the future, and mostly, I stand here today with gratitude for the genuine friendships that have shaped my life during my years at Cocalico. I was three years old when I first entered the doors of the high school. I attended the preschool class that was held just down the hall from the auxiliary gym. It was there that they allowed students like us to be in charge of three-year-olds. It was in that preschool where I met some of my very first friends. I'd like to take a moment to honor one of those friends I met there, Lexi Hoover. Though she is no longer with us, her family is here tonight. And I'd like them to know that Lexi hasn't been forgotten. Her memory lives on and each of us had the privilege of knowing her. Lexi had a kind and adventurous spirit and was a fiercely loyal friend. 
For me, she laid the foundation of what it means to be a friend, and for that I am truly grateful. And so it is for all those who have been our friends during our time here at Cocalico. They have shaped who we have become in many ways. While we may be separated by time, distance, or circumstances, the collection of memories we've created helps to make us who we are. Whether you've made dozens of friends or only a few, today is a day to celebrate those friendships. I was reflecting on my years at Cocalico, and I'd like to give a few shout outs to some of the friends that have helped me along the way. First, to all my friends who cheered with me in the student section and tossed me in the air over and over again for every point scored during that football game, thank you for teaching me the lesson to wear more durable pants in public. And an even bigger thank you to Kira Lappy for having an extra pair in her car that night. Second, it's really good to have a friend who works at Duncan. Bonus points if that friend is a manager and insanely smart at everything. <laughs> Thank you for the free donuts and help with the homework over the years. And finally, to my friends in the band, thank you for letting me play the symbols to Lady Gaga's Bad Romance, even though I had no prior band experience. I not only learned that I'm a terrible symbol player, but I also learned that being in the band is pretty cool. <laughs> and now the journey starts. A whole new adventure awaits with new friendships to make. There will be those you meet in your life that will like to create conflict and find fault in others. Refuse to join in that path. Choose to minimize conflict in your life. Instead, look for the good in others. If you look for the good, you'll most definitely find it. Always, always err on the side of kindness, and you'll never regret it. And finally, don't be afraid to seek out unlikely friendships, because they have the potential to help you experience the world in a brand new way. Congratulations, class of 2022, and thank you for the genuine friendships you've given me. I look forward to seeing all the great things you will go out and do in the world. Thank you. It is my honor to introduce Hannah Martin. Good evening, class of 2022. What a joy it is to finally be able to say that we have made it. We graduated from our assigned carpet squares in kindergarten. We successfully learned how to navigate lunch lines in elementary school. We overcame the awkwardness that middle school threw at us like a curveball. And here we are all together after persevering through our last four years of high school when graduation only seemed like the light at the end of a very long tunnel. Here we stand, finally at the end of that tunnel. No longer is it just light that we are looking towards, but we can now see clearly what lies ahead on the other side. Some of us have been dreaming about what this view might look like, but others have made it a reality. I can't help but admire the diligence of all the students that took part in the various programs offered at CTC. You saw an opportunity to pursue education in a field that you are passionate about, and you pursued it, gaining real experience in that field. This might have required setting your alarm clocks a little bit earlier and hanging up your usual school attire in exchange for a uniform, but ultimately, you were introduced to people from different schools around the county who share the same passions that you do, and these will be the same people and experiences that will begin to shape your working career. Have confidence in the skills that you've acquired. You have worked hard, and you are prepared. Now, travel with me, if you will, way down memory lane, all the way back to kindergarten, if your kindergarten experience was anything like mine, you were handed a paper with a place for you to fill in your name, your favorite color, your favorite food, and what you want to be when you grow up. This is a question where I assume you probably thought to yourself, I only learned how to tie my shoes yesterday, and you want to know what I want to do for the rest of my life? But then you proceeded to write down either teacher, doctor, firefighter, or police officer, because those were the only jobs that you knew existed. <clears throat> That question of what do you want to do when you grow up or what do you want to do after high school was one of the most dreaded questions because some of us simply didn't know what we wanted to do. But friends, I'm excited to inform you that this question has now expired. Teachers and friends can no longer ask what do you want to do after high school because we're officially out of high school. But they can ask what are you doing now and that is an even scarier question because some of us still don't know. 
Growing up is hard. It requires responsibility and maturity because it is now up to us to determine what we want to do with our lives. We won't be entering the main double doors as students ever again, and we will no longer have a four-block schedule that lays out what is expected of us from 7.40 to 2.37. If you feel overwhelmed by the many opportunities the world has to offer and don't know how you could possibly choose, take heart. Between all the teachers, parents, and graduates before us, there is a wealth of knowledge right here in this very room. I encourage you to speak to someone and talk to them about the various gap year programs, work experience opportunities, and collegiate programs that can equip you for any career ahead. If it is any consolation, I can assure you that I too am currently feeling the pressure of adulthood and the expectation of independence and maturity. Not only is today the day that we are all graduating, but it is also me and my brother's 18th birthday. Recently, I've been reflecting on what qualifies me to be an adult, and other than being alive for 6,570 days, I haven't found much. I've only cooked a handful of meals, and I've only been doing my own laundry for a few months now. So it's an understatement to say that I am terrified to move away from my parents who have pampered me and done more than for me than I could possibly deserve. Nevertheless, this day has come with much expectancy and anticipation, and it's an understatement to say that I am in awe of the past 18 years. Within this time, I've walked through my own little trials. My first years of high school were marked with a broken self-confidence, a lack of confidence, and timidness due to the loss of an important friendship, one of my deepest regrets. But the last years of high school have given me opportunities where I've experienced the most growth in both my confidence and my leadership skills. I've witnessed myself transform from a scared young ninth grader about to cry because she had to give a speech to a confident young woman who can talk in front of any size crowd about the things that she cares the most deeply about. From beginning to end, my high school experience has been a story of God's continued faithfulness. And for that reason, I need not worry about the stress, the homesickness, or the debt that college will most certainly bring. I will, however, hold fast to the confession of my faith without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Hebrews 10, 23. I understand, however, that not everyone's story has brought them to a firm assurance of faith in the Lord. For some in this room, high school was the hardest season of life that you've ever had to walk through. Maybe this was the first time you've ever experienced heartbreak, ever lost a friendship, or ever had to walk down the long road of grief as a beloved family member passed away. To those of you in this room for whom that statement is true, there is no party I could throw, no joke I could tell, no encouraging speech I can deliver, no contagious smile that I can put on my face that could possibly take that pain away. What I can do, however, is offer you that same hope of healing and restoration that I have, and if you would like a taste of that freedom, be assured that this gift is free to you too. I also realize that for some of you, the last 18 years may not have been that unique. There were probably courses that you didn't enjoy and assignments that you left undone. High school was simply average, which only elicited average work and only rewarded average grades. For you, the day might have only started at 2.37 when the last bell rang and you could finally make your own schedule and spend time doing the things that you enjoyed. Now that this chapter of life has come to a close, don't be afraid to turn over a new page. Schooling is not everyone's cup of tea, and not everyone will excel with the same enthusiasm for learning as others. Don't let high school be the end of the road for you, but rather invest in something that does excite you. Use the time that you once spent in school working for a local business, volunteering at a local charity, or picking up a new hobby that you never had time for. Don't let the imperviousness of school dissuade you from believing that the next couple of years of your life could be the best ones yet to come. To the rest of you who have found yourself on the opposite end of the spectrum and think that high school was the greatest time of your life, I would like to encourage you and celebrate you um, that the best is yet to come. High school is not the greatest that life gets, thankfully, but rather it's a launching point from which you can pursue any dream, passion, and desire of your heart. If sports are your passion, then spend every day doing what you love, but don't let it become your identity. One day you will no longer be the best on your team, your body will be worn, and you will have aches and pains in places where you've never ached before. If athletics are taken away, what will you have? If academics are your passion, then spend every day learning about your favorite subjects, but don't let it become your identity. One day, you will no longer be the smartest in the room, your knowledge of advanced calculus will begin to fade, sorry Mr. Hogan, and you won't remember all the equations that you learned to pass chemistry. If academics are fleeting, what will you have? The solution is simple. Find an identity that won't change with time. Find an identity that once gained can never be taken away. 
Friends, you have a Father in heaven who loves you and deeply desires a relationship with you. And if you accept his free gift, your status as the son or the daughter of the king can never and will never be taken away. Class of 2022, I challenge you, don't live as anything less than royalty. Take every opportunity handed to you and use it as a chance to grow. Because I believe that in this generation, we have the ability, now more than ever before in history, to do anything that we set our minds to. Blessings to you all. Thank you. It is my honor to now introduce Jack Lesher. The past, the future, the truth, the lie, the light and the dark. It seems that there are only two ways in which we perceive ourselves and everything around us. It's absolute or nonsensical. In a world in which we have become more absolutist than ever, I hope to persuade you that the answers maybe, or I don't know, are better answers than ever. Everything around us since our first day of high school has shaped us to become who we are now, in all of our opinions and views. Since that first day, we have never stopped growing, changing, and absorbing the world around us. But I believe that as we move on, we do not need to become so absolute. Instead, we can continue to grow and change throughout the course of our lives. However, it seems that we are so focused on being right that we've forgotten what it means to be unsure. To be seeking the truth, not in the absolute, but in its obscurity. To look at what others ignore and question even when it seems unnecessary. Asking the question why is the way in which we advance. Questions are what bring us together and push us forward. We all tend to see the things around us in the way that we want, as single-sided. It's no one's fault, but just our tendency. But this has a consequence. I wish to explain. Let's say it's family game night. If a die has only one number, what games can we play? The simple answer is none. Although this way, family game night would never end in arguments. Our conversations are often polar, two-sided, and forced. Instead of talking about our passions, we talk in arguments, but I guess it's the same thing for lawyers. For the non-lawyers here, why can't we question things, talk and not argue, discuss, not persuade? I'd like to provide a story. A man and his young son are attempting to escape from a maze. They've made it nearly all the way out. They finally reach a tall fence in which only the man can see over. Over it, he sees just a, a pasture with blossoming flowers. So he begins to climb over. Before he even makes it halfway, the boy yells up to his father to come back down. And when he does, the boy explains that from his perspective, near the bottom of the fence, where there are tiny cracks and holes, he sees multiple traps awaiting them on the other side. It was only through the use of both their perspectives that they escaped that day. Our ignorance of others' viewpoints hinders our future. Throughout all of our high school careers, we've had new challenges introduced and brought upon us in every way. Maybe these manifested through sports, academics, extracurriculars, or even in our own personal lives. No matter what, we've all been through our own fair share of struggles. So tonight, I would like to introduce everyone to a new challenge in which I continually struggle through, and which all of you can relate to, too. Take what I've said into consideration. View, the things, view everything with a new level of curiosity. Search for the answers that you don't want to hear, and then listen. I can't begin to fathom the number of times that I've blocked others out just because I simply disagreed. But there's value in all of our words. After the ceremony ends, I wish for everyone here to dive deeper into the strong opinions that we all hold and give them another look. Let us hear what everyone has to say. We may all agree more than we could ever imagine. Let us give up our set in stone mindsets and become more open to others' ideas. Change is inevitable and unpredictable, but neither good nor bad nor right nor wrong, it just simply is. We don't have to agree, but we should still hear each other out. Thank you. <clears throat> It is now my honor to introduce Megan McLaughlin. Good evening, parents, friends, teachers, mentors, administrators, and of course, the graduating class of 2022. It is such an honor to be up here in front of you speaking tonight. Stop and smell the roses. Look before you leap. To touch someone's heart. These are phrases that we've heard our whole lives. There are so many things around us that deal with our five senses. Starting in kindergarten, one of the very first lessons we learned about was the five senses. What we didn't realize was that all of those lessons would carry on throughout our entire lives, connecting us to the world around us. And for the last four years, that world has been Kikalgo High School. 
So, as we continue, continue to use our five senses to connect to our world, they will also keep us connected to the memories we share here. When you see an eagle, I hope you think of Cacalico. When you hear the roar of a crowd cheering, I hope it brings you back to those Friday night football games, or when you are listening to the radio and a certain song comes on, it puts you right back to all of our dances. When you are driving in your car and smell very strong manure, I hope it makes you think of those walks in the hallways between classes. Or the smell of fries brings you back to all of those years at the Denver Fair with your friends. I hope when you taste a delicious taco salad, you are transported back into the cafeteria where every other Thursday, taco salad is on the lunch menu. Or when you are eating a donut, it reminds you of all those competitions we have had where donuts were always the prize. And when you feel a sense of community, I hope that you remember this one. Maybe you have connected to some or all of these, and maybe you have some that are unique to you in your time here at Kikalico. Either way, I hope there are times where you were brought back to Kikalico High School and smile. Breaking down the memories and connections that you have made here always comes back to one idea, the five senses. Whether it is hearing your new favorite teacher talk on the first day of class, making eye contact with a peer that soon becomes a good friend later down the road, or feeling the pencil in your hand while taking a test that you know every single answer to, the starting point of all of these special, special memories are all driven by that first lesson we were introduced to all of those years ago. Graduation marks the end of one chapter, but also the beginning of a whole new one. New connections will form with new opportunities, and using these five senses is only just starting. Graduating is one of the biggest milestones that we will accomplish in our lives. Over these last four years at Kikalco High School, all of our journeys may have been different, but we are all still sitting here together today. I am so proud to be a part of the class of 2022. We did not have the most typical four years of high school, but we still made them count. So class of 2022, let's go out there, make new connections, but also never forget your old ones. There is so much to see, hear, smell, taste, and feel in this world around us. Take every opportunity you can to do just that. And don't forget to stop and smell the roses. It is my honor to introduce Emma Fosnott. Good evening. If the class of 2022 had not already blossomed personally and academically throughout our time at Cacalco, the events of the last two years have certainly provided us with a challenge that we have faced head on right from the start. I am forever grateful to be standing among some of the most intelligent, creative, and dedicated peers that a woman could ever ask for. Over the past few months, we have all united together to make the best out of the situation we were given. Of course, we prospered because we kept fighting. This brave new world was the land of the unexpected. The stressful news and the constant fear kept us in the dark. We had to entertain ourselves and do our best to keep each other sane, all while awaiting the day that we would all stand together once again. With gatherings and major events kicking back into gear, I knew that it was the time for us to show our true colors to Kakaoko. The upperclassmen kept rooting for us to stay strong and simply continue to be ourselves. They truly were our cheerleaders as they have faced similar struggles during this unique time in human history. As a class, we were back amongst our peers and knew that our class would rise up by the time we were seniors. Without a doubt, the school year was a year unlike no other. Not only did we continue to recover from our battles with the unexpected, but we also discovered a genuine sense of pride that I have never seen before. Leaders, musicians, artists, athletes, and the like all came together and united as one whole. It is such a grand feeling when you know that someone always has your back. Thus, my challenge to all of you is this. Always keep fighting. It does not matter how old you are or how you identify, you can do so much more than what you think you are capable of. Standing in many leadership positions over my four years at CHS, I understand that it is not easy to put yourself out there. However, I just know that it is an opportunity to showcase your strengths and your flaws, even if you're not proud of them. You are your own motivational coach. No one else will ever understand the complexities that make up your own person. If you ever lose your spark, you're sure to find it again if you just keep fighting. No matter where the future takes you, whether it be continuing your education, joining the military, or jumping right into the workforce, 
I encourage each one of you to keep fighting, just as we always did as young Kakaoko Eagles. Even though the human brain does not fully develop until around the age of 25, the human soul is continuously evolving as it moves through every second of life. We are full of emotions, hopes, and dreams that change as we grow and learn. We travel to new places, meet new people, and inspire future generations. Most importantly, our courage and commitment to success fosters the drive that we possess to move forward. This night is a time for celebration and reflection, but it is also a time to look ahead toward this new chapter in our lives. Our experiences shape our future, and all that we have seen and done has most certainly prepared us for this moment. This is your opportunity to be present, be positive, be passionate, and be your authentic self. If you just remember to always keep fighting, then life will take you exactly where you desire to land. Thank you.
Good evening. Tonight, it is my pleasure to introduce the top 10 students in the class of 2022 based on their grade point average and academic standing in high school. When I call your name, please stand, remain standing to be recognized. Names will be called in alphabetical order. Bethany Elmore. <laughs> Brianna Ensinger. <laughs> Emma Fosnott. <laughs> Andrew Hagee. <laughs> Jack Lesher. <laughs> Hannah Martin. Ashley Martin. Luke Mason. Alexander Pavlek. And Landon Zerby. Congratulations, you may be seated. In addition, I have two other special awards to present. First, I would like to announce the Cucalico High School Class of 2022 Salutatorian. Would you please join me in a round of applause for this year's Salutatorian, Jack Lesher. And finally, it is my pleasure to announce the Cucalico High School Class of 2022 Valedictorian. Please join me in a round of applause for this year's Valedictorian, Hannah Martin. At this time, it is my honor to welcome back to the podium Mr. Scott Benich, principal of Cocalico High School, to make his recommendations for the class of 2022 to receive their diplomas. Class of 2022, for the next couple of minutes, I have a few things I'd like to discuss with you before presenting you to the superintendent and the school board president uh, for commencement. The comments will be brief, but heartfelt. As you are well aware, your path to this day has not been the educational norm. For many, many years, with only minor modifications, the four years a person spends in a high school usually follows a common pathway. Your freshman year, other than the typical squirrely awkwardness at that, that time, was largely status quo. No state or national pronouncements concerning education at Cocalico High School or really anywhere else. Fortunately, that was not the case for the remaining three years that brought you to this point. So what does that mean for you? My point is that the past three years have been difficult for many of you. I know, working closely with the junior and senior classes, there have been significant struggles to get some of you where you are today. Throughout my life, what I've learned is that no one is immune to hardship. But do not let the hard times define who you are. Do these types of experiences shape and mold you? Most definitely. But they should not predetermine your future. Learn from your hardships, but do not embrace them. I would also challenge you to be a generous person. You know, what do I mean by that? Presently, I'm not referring to being generous with your finances, but later, after you have some finances, that is important too. For now, I challenge you to be generous with your time and your talents. There's never been a time in my life that I've regretted helping someone or volunteering for an organization. If you already are a generous person, keep at it. It counts. If you are not, try it. It's gratifying and much appreciated by the people you help. Additionally, and this is alluded to in several of the other speeches, I encourage you to grant yourself grace in deciding on a future path. Sometimes young people feel pressured to commit to a career right out of high school. For most people, 
It takes time and experiences to find the right job, career, profession. Fortunately for all of you, the job market could not be better. Employers in all fields are vying for quality employees such as yourselves. I'm encouraging you to do things such as travel, take classes that intrigue you at college, not necessarily the ones in your major. Apply for a high interest job, not necessarily a high paying job. And pursue a hobby, maybe even try making a living at it. You never know how these experiences may affect the direction you ultimately decide to take as a future vocation. Please do not feel rushed into deciding on a career. You really do have options. Conversely, for those of you who know what you want to do and have made steps in there in the right direction to get there, I do applaud your foresight and your dedication. My last piece of advice this evening is simple. It's to approach life with a sense of humor. Interjecting humor into your work or personal life does that mean that does not mean that no one will take you seriously. It also does not mean that you will not work hard. What humor does do is alleviate tension in you and your colleagues. For me and many others, it helps put matters into perspective and moves the process along. Whether you are a master of one-liners, a funny storyteller, or skillful at crafting amusing emails, that's me, everyone will appreciate the smile you bring to their faces. Thank you for your attention. I will miss waiting and speaking with you as you pass by my post on the cafeteria steps each day in the morning in between classes. Interacting with you, it keeps us educators young at heart and always growing as individuals. It has truly been a pleasure working with you the past four years, and I wish you the best as you pursue your dreams beyond high school. If you haven't noticed, I have a VIP sitting to my right this evening. All right, he didn't want to miss it. And so for the last time, we'll be together here. We can come off the stage, take a second to congratulate you on your accomplishments and send you on your way. Now, parents, family members, staff, and school board members, it is my honor to declare that these students have met the requirements needed to graduate from Procalico High School. Dr. Musser and Reverend Eshelman, I recommend these students for diplomas without reservation. Each student has attained the knowledge, skills, and character that will make our community proud. Reverend Eshelman, it is my honor to present to you the members of Cocalico High School, Class of 2022. Thank you so much, Mr. Benich, and let me uh, say congratulations to you. And when I say that to you, that comes from me personally, but it also comes from the other eight members of the Calico School District Board of Directors. And as an elected official, it actually comes from 20,000 plus residents of Cacalico School District. And I want to say on their behalf, thank you for your hard work. Thank you for your diligence. Thank you for your flexibility. Thank you for your resilience and the many other characteristics that, have, that you've displayed that have actually brought you to this place here today. We know that those things will serve you well as they have in the past. They will serve you well in the future. And we know that no matter where life takes you, that you will make us proud. And as you go into that place, we recognize that there's a part of you that will always be with us, and there's a part of Cacalico that will always go with you. You probably have heard the phrase, all hands on deck. And it's a phrase that has origins in the maritime, and specifically even, you know, more, being more specific, from the Navy. And it's a command. And while that phrase is used in various ways, originally it was used on a ship and still is used as a command. And it was during a time when uh, maybe it was going into a battle, ship was going into a storm, maybe it was even preparing for a parade or coming into port. But while there were times in a vessel in which there would be certain groups that would be resting while the other ones were doing the work, there was that call for everybody, all hands on deck, Everybody use your skills, know what you're trained for, do your job, uh, 
give yourself for the benefit of the whole. Let me tell you, graduates, that uh, you are graduating into a all, an all-hands-on-deck world. So a little bit ago, I represented the entire community of Cacalico when I congratulated you. And if I could just kind of stretch that a little bit further, I'm going to represent all of the adult population when I say, we need you. We need fresh and innovative, innovative ideas. We need um, new creative strategies and designs. And I'm convinced that some of the solutions to some of the greatest challenges that we face in the world is actually seated right here in front of us. And we need you. So I'm gonna encourage you, my encouragement to you on your graduation day is to not hold back, but that you would step in and step up and that you would offer, contribute what's there, what you have to contribute because we need you. And so while my encouragement to you is to step in and step up and give what you have to offer, I would also add my encouragement to you, my desire for you is that as you go from here and as you do that, that the Lord would bless you and keep you. That the Lord would make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. That the Lord would lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Dr. Musser. Bethany Page Elmore. Hannah Rose Martin. Jack Emerson Lesher. Megan Catherine McLaughlin. Emma Kelly Bosnock. Andrew Michael Hagee. Cameron James Beavis. Kayla Marie Brown. Brianna Rose Ensinger. Elena Corrine Lamus. Tatiana Nicole Martin. Mariah Matthews. Jillian Lee Musser. Brendan Keith Pierce. Christopher David Quattarella. Catherine Lucinda Shannon.
Virginia Faith Marie Adams. Charlene Page Albera. Ashlyn Brooke Allhouse. Kylie Lynn Althouse. Travis Lee Amsbaugh. Michaela Lynn Anderson. Luke Lawrence Angstad. Tyler Ray Balzer. Katie Jo Barrett Moyer. <laughs> Turk Von Baum. Ian Riley Becker. Madeline Gail Beekner. Lauren Elizabeth Bentley. <laughs> Elena Irene Blackburn. Gavin Caldwell Bowley. Nina Nikolaevna Borizov. Anthony Michael Barasa. Austin Thomas Bowman. Cole Selig Boyer. Thomas Joseph Boyer. Kelsey Ann Brenneman. Crystal Lynn Brown. Colton Owen Brubaker. Dylan Lee Brubaker. Ryan Jeffrey Brubaker. Ryan Lee Burkholder. Madison Joy Biscavage. Carl Anthony Kamoff. Aiden Thomas Carr. Avante Alexander Chia. Ethan Farrell. Jamar Christopher Claiborne. Carolina Marie Christie. Reagan Brenda Collada Rigney. Andrew Patrick Calba. Logan Gunner Cook. Durgan Cook. Ivan Dean Croy. Roman Kraus. Joseph Eugene Current. Alexandra Marie Cruz. Cage Elizabeth DeHaven. Haven. 
Jessica Davey. Kyra Azari Diaz. Kaylee Lynn DeMattis. Rachel Lauren Eberly. Gabriella Michaela DiStefano. Molly Ray Fosnott. Chloe Larissa Eller. Jeremiah Figueroa. Nash Spencer Fosnott. Bryson Alexander Flinton. Kaylee Jean Fisher. Scotia Claire Foose. Stephen Clark Flynn. Kylie Jo Freeman. Caden Douglas Frederick. Noah Kyle Fry. Henry Benish Fry. Tristan David Gill. Aaliyah Christina Funk. Austin Good. Abraham Yair Gonzalez. Kyle Joshua Grisafi. Madison Sky Gray. Tanner O'Brien Habecker. Hannah Lee Guare. <laughs> Aubrey Hope Haldeman. Gabrielle Elizabeth Hagen. Isabel Ann Hale. Toby Christopher Haldeman. Alexis Ann Heft. Lucas Jeremiah Hall. Max Daniel Hershey. Bethany Lord Her. Julia May Hollinger. Ella Kathleen High. Joshua Carl Hostetter. Peyton Lee Hornberger. Seth Connor Holscheiser. Gabriel Horisic. Blake Kenneth Johnson. Jacob Desmond John Humphrey. Emma Hope Cleese. Emily Grace Kelchner. Dylan Matthew Cayley. 
Colin David Nepper. Arba Krifka. Alex Marshall Kowalski. Ivana Kamar. Nolan Scott Crick. Riley Alexis Kunkel. Alexis Page Crimes. Lauren Faye Leininger. Trisha Kumar. Alec Trevor Leshner. Kira Brooke Labby. Richard Chusang Lo. Connor Shane Lizy. Delaney Joe Lucky. Sapphire Celeste Lively. Ashley Nicole Martin. Samantha Joy Longenecker. Luke Robert Mason. Brennan James Mahard. Kerr James McRae. Caleb Ryan Martin. Trenton Lee Meese. Marianne Teresa McCormick. Kirsten Lee Mertz. Hey. Hannah Beth McRae. Molly Elizabeth Lynn Moore. Matthew Medeiros. Hannah Susan Morrison. Amanda Joy Mitchell. <laughs> Abigail J. Mummert. <laughs> Tristan Najee Moore. <laughs> Aaron Elizabeth Nast. Diane Danchia Moa. Caitlin Chase Niedemeyer. Corinne Ashley Musser. Connor Thomas Parkhill. Katarina Nazarian. Aiden Dale Pavlek. Jack Ryan Pannebecker. Emma Ray Pihoke. Cole Andrew Patterson. Yeah. 
Andrew Joseph Peters. Alexander Robert Pavlik. Christian Tyler Quick. Brooklyn Pena. AJ Rally. Ethan Dean Popolis. Jack L. Rathman. Eliana Grace Quirk. Jasmine Marie Reinel. Curran Elise Rathman. Montana Sue Roth. Brian Lawrence Reedy. <laughs> Yabian Rodriguez. Trey Matthew Rios. Cole Thomas Rudder. Dabian Rodriguez. Jordan Taylor Santer. Gordon James Russell. Madison Chase Souter. Maida Diamond Sampson. Dalton Garrett Schoner. Christopher Joel Santos Ortiz. <laughs> Carter Isaiah Sensene. <laughs> Isabel Brianna Schonauer. Elena Leanne Shonsky. Asin Lee Seidel. Chayla Marie Slusser. Jeremy Allen Sensen. Elmer James Smucker. Tyler Aiden Shea. Shania Ann Soner. Riley Morgan Simpson. Nicholas Lee Spangler. Jordan Kelly Smith. James Eugene Stauffer. Kyle Andrew Snyder. Rebecca Danielle Steyer. <laughs> Abigail Constance Lyra Sola. 
Cottrell Grace Stoltzfus. Paige Marie Spade. Skylar James Stroll. Jared William Stoffer. Alexander David Stuck. Alexander Michael Stocker. Alinda Victoria Swigert. Armin. Amrin Kyla Stoner. Jamie Olivia Swiger. Parker Scott Stroll. Blake James Today. Caleb James Studerman. Cade Hunter Thorpe. Anthony John Swigert. Alexandra Trubacha. Donna Alexa Swigert. Elijah Alexander Higaldi. Matthew Allen Taylor. Austin Kong Cheng Vang. Megan Elizabeth Troutman. Cameron Matthew Weaver. Paul Isaiah Turner. Alex Riley Welker. Connor Pierce Yulry. Taylor Lee Wanger. Lucas Taylor Walter. Ethan Mark Wickenheiser. Bradley Michael Weinhold. Catherine Ann Williams. Simon Michael Wellman. Kylie Ann Wise. Tyler Eugene Wenrick. Grace Kaylee Yang. Patrick David Wickenheiser. Novea Monet York. Mackenzie Nicole Wilson. Emma Jean Yun.
Damian Allen Wolf. Jonathan Austin Yunt. Jada Monet York. Eric Allen Zimmerman. Austin Michael Young. Brielle Faith Zwali. Jillian Kate Young. Landon Douglas Zerby. Luke Christopher Zuck. So class of 2022, I will remember you. <laughs> you may have lost your marbles, but I never will. <laughs> so every year I, I ask, what's the senior prank? And I thought that it had been accomplished when the office had caution tape in front of it on Monday morning. But I don't think you were done. So the true tr prank would have been if I would have taken them all and scattered them all in front of here, right? <laughs> so in all seriousness, by the power bestowed on me as superintendent of the Cacalico School District, I now declare you graduates of Cacalico High School, class of 2022. <laughs> Congratulations, you made it. You worked hard, and you deserve to be celebrated today. Family, friends, faculty, administrators, and school board members, let's give the class of 2022 another round of applause. Now to the graduates. I'm guessing there are a number of people in the crowd today who helped you get to this point. They may have helped you with homework, made sure you got up on school days, or supported you when you needed it most. Let's give a round of applause to those who were there for you through the last 13 years. A quote from Misty Copeland, American ballet dancer, seems fitting for moments like this. Anything is possible when you have the right people there to support you. I was thinking about this quote and the many ways it applies to graduation and life in general when I joined our fifth graders at camp last week. You may recall Camp Swatara from when you were in fifth grade. This year, we tried out Refreshing Mountain Camp, which has slightly different activities, some of which are quite challenging. But with the help and encouragement of friends and trusted adults, 
Many of our students took on rock climbing, elevated ropes courses, and zip lining. It was great to see the fulfillment and satisfaction that they got from facing their fears and conquering the challenges that were provided. During my visit, I was told repeatedly I also should give zip lining a try. And I finally agreed. After getting strapped in and following the guide up to the tower, I found myself standing on a ledge far above the ground, unfortunately looking down. It was an anxious moment as I thought about everything that could go wrong. But as I hesitated, I heard cheers of encouragement from behind me saying, you can do it. All you have to do is take that first step. With my heart pounding, I checked the straps on my harness and grabbed the rope that was handed to me. And then, because I didn't want to disappoint the fifth graders who were cheering me on, I fixed my eyes on the destination. And with relief, I saw there was someone at the other end waiting to help me when I arrived. It gave me the courage to ignore the drop in front of me, take a deep breath, and step off the ledge. In that moment, I started to fly. I was zipping through the air with great speed, and I felt free. It was absolutely exhilarating. And I really did enjoy the air and the fate in my face and the wind in my hair. Once I stepped back on solid ground, I was greeted with cheers and high fives. And as I high fived back, I immediately started telling everyone how much fun it was and that I was so glad the others had pushed me to try. And truly, zip lining is something I would now re recommend to anyone. As I drove away from camp that day, my mind turned back to all of you and the many connections between zip lining and what you are experiencing at this stage in your life. I thought about all the support given to our fifth graders and even to me and how much that mattered. And I thought about how much support has mattered to you and will continue to matter for each of you. Graduates, you are standing on the edge of your next adventure. You've arrived at these heights today, one step at a time, sometimes through great difficulty and obviously with a great sense of humor and the help and support of many people. Parents, teachers, counselors, and friends were there for you, encouraging you, helping you every chance, every day. Now, you're equipped with a diploma and you have many skills that will enable you to reach out and pursue your next set of dreams as you step away from Kakali Coast School District and into mission work, volunteer service, the military, trade school, college, or the workforce, remember the supports that remain in place for you and take a hold of them. As you journey forward, you'll find new friends and supporters to guide and encourage you, while at the same time, all these people who've been cheering you on will still be there to support you when you need them. Yes, you will experience fears, temporary setbacks along the way, but eventually you'll reach your new goals and you'll experience that joy of accomplishment all over again. And when you do achieve those dreams, take time to celebrate. Don't forget to reach out to those around you and thank them. And look to those coming behind and encourage them to keep pressing on. Because after all, everyone needs someone to support them. And that someone may just be you. Class of 2022, congratulations again. Your time here as a Cacalico Eagle is coming to an end. And as Gil Atkinson would say, no one can really predict to what heights you might soar. Even you will not know until you spread your wings. So go ahead, graduates, step out of the nest and fly. 
Thank you, and best wishes for a successful future. And now, it is my honor to introduce Megan McLaughlin. Seniors, please rise. Now that we are graduates, it is time to turn our tassels. <laughs> it is time for the cap toss. Parents, get your cameras ready, and students, please remove your tassel. On the, on the count of three, we will toss our caps. One, two, three. You can now be seated. It is my honor to introduce Andrew Hagee. All righty, let's get the show on the road. It's my distinct honor to bid you farewell. Um, I know all of our legs are a little stiff, and thankfully it's not too stuffy in here. Um, but I promise you we'll get through this together. Okay, thank you, Megan, for that. Thank you. Before we all go our separate ways, I thought I would share some parting wisdom from one of my favorite philosophers. The title of this speech was originally The Owl of Minerva, which is a reference to the preface of the 1821 book, The Philosophy of Right, by George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Hegel writes, when philosophy paints gray and gray, then has the shape of life grown old. The owl of Minerva spreads its wings only with the coming of dusk. In the context of the rest of the book, Hegel is trying to suggest that the best insights come from hindsight. For Hegel, we can only reflect on life after we've lived it. So as high schoolers, we can only reflect on our experience after having gone through it. But I think this quote neglects all the valuable insights we can make throughout our lifetime, knowledge gained from lived experience, not only from reflection. As we begin to depart from this chapter of life, we must take time to recognize those who have helped us, those who have made everything possible, the people who have made this lived experience happen. So thank you to our custodians and our staff and food services for keeping our schools running and well fed. Thank you to our crossing guards and our bus drivers for safely transporting us to wherever we needed to go. Thank you to our counselors, coaches, and those involved with extracurriculars. Thank you for your guidance and compassion. Thank you to our administration, our principals, superintendents, assistants, financial and data personnel, and our board of directors. You make these events run smoothly. Thank you to all our staff working in the middle school and elementary school campuses. You shaped us into who we are today. Thank you to our team of nurses, librarians for keeping us safe and informed. Thank you to all the assistants in every role you occupy. The work you do makes the day-to-day -day possible. And thank you to all those who normally labor in the dark, our directors of athletics, food services, buildings and grounds, technology, academic support, 
human resources, transportation, communications, and special services, and all of their respective staff. Thank you to our groundskeepers, our maintenance staff, and our technical support. And finally, thank you to our wonderful teachers in every department, English, science, music, world language, health and PE, art, business, social studies, FCS, math, tech ed, and especially those who braves our online and virtual learning spaces. Thank you for all that you do, both within your job descriptions and outside. Thank you for sponsoring clubs, agreeing to meet us before and after school, and inspiring us to learn when otherwise we wouldn't have. Please enjoy your summer. You earned it. Thank you, parents and guardians, for molding us into the people we have become today. Thank you for always supporting us, believing in us, even when we didn't. Truly, thank you for making all of this possible. And finally, thank you to my fellow classmates for the lasting impact you've had on my life from the time we spent together. And while this concludes our ceremony, it does not necessarily conclude our education. As we prepare to go forward with the many lessons learned in high school, we have a responsibility to do something with the education that has been instilled with us. So, graduates, as you reflect on the knowledge gleaned from this chapter of your life, know that none of it could have been possible without those who were there to guide us along the way. In the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity. So please, take this opportunity to give thanks who have helped us to this stage. Thank you and farewell. Okay, at this time, I'd like to invite Coralaris to the stage. Uh, everyone, please rise for the singing of our alma mater. The words are in the back of your program. <laughs> 